In this video I'm going to introduce the chain rule. This is uh, very common in a Calculus 1 class uh, right after you learn how to do just your basic uh, product rule and quotient rule of that nature then usually chain rule is introduced. So chain rule basically deals with composite functions. So prior to chain rule you could only do functions you can only take the derivative of functions such as x squared plus 1 or sine x or 3x plus 2. All right, now, once we introduce this chain rule, then you're going to be able to do it with a composite function. So you're going to be able to take maybe, say, the square root of x squared plus 1. This is a composite function. Hopefully you remember from pre-calc, you know, finding the inside function and the outside function. The inside function is the x squared plus 1. The outside function is that square root. All right, with chain rule, it's going to be very important that we can see where the inside and the outside of that function is. Okay, looking at sine of 6x, now that we are going to introduce chain rule, we can do the derivative of this. My outside function is sine, my inside function is 6x. Same thing down here. Inside function would be that 3x plus 2. Outside function is something being raised to the fifth power. So um, you probably didn't realize that when you started your derivatives, you were only doing functions um, that were not composite functions, but that's really how it worked. You cannot do the composite functions until you introduce this chain rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually take a look at what the rule looks like. All right, written out. The derivative of f of g of x, all right, being a composite function here, we are going to take the derivative of f with g of x on the inside. My outer function is f, so we're taking the derivative of the outer function and multiplying by the derivative of the inner function, so my g is the inner function. All right, and notice that that g of x there is left alone. Now, not my idea, but definitely I have seen this um, somewhere else by someone else, writing this out in words. Okay, chain rule is the derivative of the outer function leaving the inside alone, which is exactly what we did here. The derivative of the outside function, which is f, the outer function, leaving that inside function alone, and then multiplying by the derivative of the inside function. Inside function is g, and there's my derivative. <coughs> so this is just a really nice way to translate this into words. All right, now, with that being said, let's take a look at, um, we'll start out with two straightforward examples, and then we will um, do a third example that is a little more challenging. All right, so for this first one, I'm going to take the derivative of f of x is equal to x squared plus 1 raised to the third power. My inside function is that x squared plus 1. The outside function is something being raised to the third power. Okay, so I'm going to set it up and tell the person that I am doing the derivative, so f prime of x. All right, now if I take the derivative of the outside function, the outside function is x to the third power, so that's power rule. I'm going to pull that 3 down in front. I'm going to leave the inside alone, x squared plus 1 and then subtract 1 from that exponent because that's that power rule. And then I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So I'm going to actually show it here, d dx of the 2x plus 1. When you first learn chain rule, it's kind of a good idea to actually show this. And especially if you've got more than just two functions. You can have composite functions, a function inside a function inside a function inside a function. You've got a lot of chain rules to do there. So writing it out, showing this DDX notation, that derivative of that inside function will be helpful. All right, now here at the beginning, I'm not going to do anything with this. We've already taken the derivative, so we're just going to leave it there. Derivative now of x squared plus 1 is just going to give me a 2x. I can simplify, clean this answer up a little bit. I'm going to have a 6x, which I'm going to pull out in front. x squared plus 1 to the second power. So pretty straightforward implementation there of the chain rule. All right, now let's take a look at this derivative. We've got the function of the square root of x to the third plus 2. Now, my suggestion is, is that you rewrite the function. Okay, so I would suggest that you rewrite so that you can really see where your inside and your outside function is and instead of a square root there. So I'm going to rewrite it, f of x as x to the third plus 2x, and then I'm going to raise it to 
the one half power. <coughs> Excuse me. Inside function here, x to the third plus two x. Outside function is something being raised to that one half power. So again, I've got that power rule going on for my outside function times the derivative of the inside. So when I start my derivative, I'm going to go f prime of x to indicate I'm starting my derivative. I want to do the power rule, so I'm going to pull that one half down in front. I'm going to leave the inside alone, x to the third plus 2x, and then subtract 1 from that exponent, which is going to give me a negative 1 half times d dx times the derivative of that inside function. All right, on my next line. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this. So 1 half x to the third plus 2x to that negative 1 half. Now let's calculate this derivative here. Power rule there, 3x squared plus derivative there is going to be 2. Okay, let's go ahead and put that set of parentheses around that. All right, now this is raised to the negative 1 half. I do not want a negative exponent. I'm going to move this to the denominator, and I'm going to rewrite it as a square root. All right, that 2 is going to remain in the bottom. This 3x squared plus 2 will stay in the top. So I'm going to have a 3x squared plus 2 in the top. That 2 is still in the bottom. Moving this to the bottom and making it a square root, x to the third plus 2x. So just a nice little simplified answer there. Now again, pretty straightforward use of the chain rule. Now let's beef it up a little bit and <coughs> use the chain rule within a product rule. Okay, because all the rules that you have previously learned are still going to be implemented. All right, so on my function here, f of x equals x squared times the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, so hopefully you do see that, okay, there's two functions there being multiplied. I've got that x squared, and I'm multiplying by the square root of 1 minus x squared. So I'm going to have to implement product rule initially. So actually, let's write that down. So initially, I'm going to do product rule. <clears throat> and I think I am going to go ahead and stick with that ddx notation. Okay, so I'm going to tell the person, okay, I'm starting with my derivative, f prime of x. All right, so <clears throat> product rule. First, x squared times the derivative of the second, so I'm going to go ddx of the square root of 1 minus x squared. I'm not going to calculate that derivative yet. I'm just going to show it. The first times the derivative of the second. Let's go ahead and put square brackets around that. And then plus the second. And when I write the second here, I am going to go ahead and pull that up to a 1 half. So 1 minus x squared to the 1 half times the derivative of the first. Now, that one I can take that derivative really simply there, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a 2x. So I'm going to go ahead and not use the ddx notation and just take that derivative. All right, now, <clears throat> looking at this line, I still have work to do. I still have a derivative in here, but when I take a look at this derivative, hopefully you're going to see, oh, I've got an inside function. I've got that outside function of the square root. So now I have to implement chain rule. Okay, so it gets a little more complicated one step at a time here. The x squared is just going to stay. I'm not doing anything with that. Okay, now I'm going to, um, do I want to do it yet or do I want to see the one half? All right, here, let's do this so that I don't have to actually add a whole other line. Over here, you should be thinking 1 minus x squared raised to the 1 half. That's what you should be thinking there. And if you wanted, you could, when you, have, when you originally wrote that d over dx, you could have written it in this form as opposed to leaving it in a radical. All right, so I need to pull the 1 half down in front. So pull the 1 half down in front, leave the inside alone, 1 minus x squared, subtract 1 from that exponent, I'm going to get a negative 1 half. All right, and then because I've got to implement chain rule, then it's going to be times d dx of that inside function, which is 1 minus x squared. All right, plus over here, I'm not going to necessarily do anything with that. Uh, we could go ahead and move the 2x in front if we want to just go ahead and clean it up a little bit. 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. All right, now 
<clears throat> I did not calculate this derivative because I wanted to use that ddx notation and show, you know, the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. All right, let's do some more simplifying here. Um, let's leave this x squared times the one half, one minus x squared to the negative one half. Okay, now let's actually calculate this derivative. The one goes to zero. When I calculate the derivative here, I'll have a negative two x. Okay, so now at this point, I have calculated all <clears throat> of my derivatives. So from here on out, it's just going to be, okay, how much can you simplify this algebraically? All right, let's work on this expression because all of this is being multiplied plus all of this is being multiplied. Okay, so let's see what kind of simplifying we can do here. This is a negative one-half, which is going to go to my denominator to make a positive. All right, I will have a negative two here. This is going to be in the top, and this 2 here in, is going to be in the bottom, so the 2's are going to cross out. Let's go ahead and cross those out while we're thinking this through here. <coughs> the negative stays in the top. I've got an x squared and that x there, so that will give me an x to the third in the top. So this is going to be um, negative x to the third. All right, all over, we're going to move this to the bottom, and I'm going to go ahead and leave it as a 1 half because I know what's coming here. Sometimes you're going to want to leave it there because it's just going to be easier. I mean, I, if you want to change them, you'd need to change them all to square roots. And since I've left this one half, let's leave this one half. Okay. Um, now over here, all right, I have an expression. Over here, I've got a fraction. I'm going to, a lot of people are going to want you to actually get common denominators. This is just a single number. I can put it over one, and this is a fraction. So I'm going to do that so I can really easily see that I've got fractions and I need common denominators. So 1 minus x squared to the 1 half, and then all over 1, because some professors are going to want you to go all the way down and get a single expression. So if I need common denominators here, this is my denominator, I need to multiply by that. So let's do it in pink. So I need to multiply by a 1 minus x squared to the 1 half over a 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. So I'm multiplying by a form of 1, so I'm not changing this. <clears throat> All right, uh, now when I multiply here, okay, Think of radicals, square root times another square root means the square root's going to go away, and I'm just going to be left with what's underneath right there. So let's go ahead and write it all over one fraction because that was the whole point of doing this was to get those common denominators. So 1 minus x squared to the 1 half, that's my common denominator. This negative x to the third is still there. And like I said, this times this, those square roots are going to go away. In other words, the radicals are going to go away. Um, and 1 minus x squared is what's left. So plus 2x, 1 minus x squared. All right, and then to clean this answer up just a little bit more here, I can distribute that 2x across the top, and I'm probably going to go ahead and write that as a square root. So then I'm going to have a negative x to the third plus a 2x minus a 2x to the third and then all over the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, um, let's see. Oh, I can combine some like terms. I've got x to the third there, so let's go even farther here. Let's do a negative 3x to the third plus a 2x, and then all over the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, so <clears throat> real quickly, as soon as that chain rule is introduced and then you start putting it within a product rule or within a quotient rule, then the problem um, all of a sudden becomes pretty long. Now, in all honesty, really, I did product rule and then I did chain rule, but after that, from here all the way down, all it is is just algebra. And so you've got to be really good with that algebra, see what's going on. All right, my guess is um, not very many college professors would allow you to stop at this point. They would make you get those common denominators to get down to a nice, single answer right there. Um, definitely, thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.